We all know about photosynthesis. It's the process that allows autotrophs, like plants, algae, and cyanobacteria, to harvest energy from sun. Symbiosis allows animals to reap the benefit of photosynthesis from endosymbionts, such as the case in the mutualistic relationship between zooxanthellae algae and many corals. What if there was an animal, however, that could take it one step further, that could retain nothing but the chloroplasts, and in addition to retention, they can also maintain them? Elysia chlorotica, commonly known as the emerald green sea slug, is a heterotrophic animal that feasts on the sap of algae. In feeding on the algae, the slug retains the chloroplasts within its diverticula, specialized cells surrounding the gut. During ideal times with plenty of food availability, E. chlorotica will continue its heterotrophic lifestyle feeding on more algae. The remarkable thing, however, is what happens in a period of starvation. The chloroplasts that have been stored away are now used for photosynthesis providing a survivable amount of energy for the remainder of the slug's life or until food becomes available again. These chloroplasts are the only remaining part of the algae, which begs the question, how are these sequestered chloroplasts continuing to function? Though chloroplasts, much like mitochondria, carry their own genome, the chloroplast genome only has 139 genes encoding for the 1 to 5,000 proteins necessary for photosynthesis and chlorophyll production. The necessary information for these processes is typically carried within the algal nucleus. Since the nucleus is destroyed in feeding, there must be another solution. Elysia chlorotica could be evidence of horizontal gene transfer between two more multicellular organisms. By sequencing the genome of the algae and E. chlorotica, Dr. Sidney Pierce found 52 algal nuclear genes coded for within the genome of E. chlorotica. In addition to this discovery, sequencing the genome of unhatched larval DNA has shown that larvae, which have never fed on algae, have received laterally transferred genes of the algal nucleus from their parents. Though young sea slugs must still obtain their chloroplasts through feeding, these algal genes could be the key to long-term maintenance of chloroplasts within an animal cell. If genes can be transferred from algae to E. chlorotica to its young, is it possible that someday the genes necessary for the production of chloroplasts will exist at birth within the slug's DNA?